Thank you, Nelson. And I know you're all here to hear Senator Menendez, so the minute he walks in the door, I will stop in mid-sentence. Let me just say a few words about what's happening in Washington right now in terms of the administration's policy towards Latin America. And I think it's a very exciting time. It's an exciting time generally, as we all know. But when we look at the focus on this hemisphere, it is a time of almost unparalleled activity in my experience or my viewing of this in the last 35, 40 years. Today, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, is in Mexico. The Vice President of the United States, Joseph Biden, is on his way to Chile, where he will attend a meeting of presidents, not only of the hemisphere, but from Europe as well. At, the, at that summit, he will have the opportunity uh, of meeting with uh, President Bachelet of Chile, President Kirchner of, uh, of Argentina, and other leaders. Uh, he will then, on his way back, stop in Costa Rica, where he will meet with the presidents or the representatives of all the Central American countries. Uh, within uh, a few days, we will see other cabinet members traveling to Mexico as well. There's a great expectation in this town, in this administration, about the Summit of the Americas. Summit, as you know, will be held in Trinidad and Tobago on April 17th through 19th. President Obama will attend. He will stop in Mexico on his way to uh, Trinidad for further consultations with the Mexican government, further underlying the support that this administration is giving President Calderon and his government uh, in their uh, very justified struggle for public safety, and also uh, underscoring the fact that our agenda with Mexico is very broad and includes many, many issues which are go beyond the security issue. Now, I think all of you have had the opportunity to read the documents that are being prepared for the summit. We have very good news today. Meeting in Trinidad, the uh, group, it's called the SURGE, the Summit Implementation Review Group, which is made up of representatives of each country, just today finished the, do the declaration of the summit. It is a document of some 70 plus paragraphs, as you can imagine, uh, because it has to be negotiated among 34 countries. Uh, it is a consensus document, and there may be words in there that one country doesn't like or another country doesn't like. But the Im most important thing is that this document represents a consensus thinking about this hemisphere, which in very brief terms I can tell you is, is that we must cooperate to face the shared problems that we are all dealing with in this summit, some of which have become more acute recently because of the economic crisis. As far as the United States is concerned, the message that the President will bring to the summit is one precisely of cooperation, one that says there is no American plan, North American plan for this hemisphere, other than to cooperate with those who want to cooperate with us to face some of these issues. Now, what will some of these issues that will be discussed at the summit be? First, obviously, the economic situation of the world will form not only a topic, but the backdrop for the summit. What can the world do working together to ease the problems created by this latest crisis? I think much of that answer will become clearer after the meeting of the G20 in Europe at the beginning of April. And keep in mind, at the meeting of the G20, which are the largest economies, there will be represented from this hemisphere Canada, the United States, Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina, five important countries that will have a particular influence on what the G20 itself discusses and determines. There is another level of economic and social issues 
which are of course related to the larger macroeconomic problems, but really deserve to be discussed in their own right. And I know that those of you who have worked with President Obama and have supported him and uh, know the thinking of Secretary of State Clinton, there will be a strong emphasis at the summit and strongly pushed by the United States to discuss and recognize the importance of social inclusion, social justice. What are the nations of this hemisphere doing to speak to the problems of the most marginalized, the poor, the indigenous, uh, others who don't have a voice? And the, the, there will be a series of conversations and discussions about this. By the way, let me put in a parenthesis. The summit will involve probably more than a dozen hours of conversation among the presidents. There are three plenary sessions, which the presidents will attend with some assistance, and there's also a three-hour retreat in which it's only the presidents and prime ministers, one from each country in the room. So during those multiple conversations, they will be talking about the economy, as I say, both in the macroeconomic, uh, how to beat this crisis, and in the more human element of what to do about social inclusion, inclusion, social justice, the things that we care about, microfinance, women's rights, gender equality. There is, I think, all throughout the hemisphere, a real concern that the progress that we have seen, that the hemisphere has had over the last five or six years, uh, growing GDP, reduction in poverty, that that is fragile. It's, it, it is uh, disappearing as we speak under the weight of this crisis. And the leaders, including President Obama, are going to speak to that. <coughs> Another broad area of of concern of this administration and of the summit is what I would call the green agenda. There will be a discussion of energy issues, how the hemisphere can cooperate on dealing with energy issues as a particularly important subset of environmental matters. Of course, as you know, the environment will be a major issue this year as we move to the Copenhagen climate change negotiations. Important in that are certain topics like forestry, land management, uh, adaptation. But clean energy in all of its ramifications, renewables, biofuels, energy conservation, uh, other topics that we're all familiar with, that will be a principal pro a topic of concern for our president and he will be talking about that with his colleagues. And finally, let me just say that another topic that is of primary concern to everyone attending this conference uh, is the whole question of public safety. And public safety not in the specific narrow focus, which are, are nevertheless very important, of anti-narcotics and counter-terrorism, but the public safety issues that every one of us that travels in the Caribbean and in Latin America are aware of. The violence or that is uh, uh, that the citizens of this hemisphere are subject to. So I see Senator Menendez is here and he has much more interesting things to say than I do. Let me just tell you that there is great expectation in this uh, administration and matched by an expectation in the hemisphere that this summit will be immensely successful. And you are seeing with this burst of activity uh, on the part of the administration and the visits of Secretary Clinton and Secretary, uh, Vice President Biden, something that I am convinced will continue through the entire length of this administration. Thank you.